the one two pitch. Breaking ball pulled into shallow right field of base hit. Sizemore's coming home. The throw to the plate is offline. The Phillies win it here in the bottom of the 15th inning. Ryan Howard, the hero in the 15th, as they pull it out two to one. The rally hatch works, and the celebration is underway. More than five hours long, but everybody felt pretty good coming to the ballpark today because the Phillies had picked up a victory in game one of this three-game series, and now it's time for game number two, an interleague matchup between the Phils and the Houston Astros. Now, the Astros overall have a very good record against the Phils, but the last six games dating back to two years ago, the Phillies actually have won six straight against the Astros. 32 runs to the Astros, 16. Certainly a better overall batting average. And the bullpen, 2.70. And part of that was the success from last night's game. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, joined by Jamie Moyer. You get rested? Everything ready to go? Yeah, I got both eyes open. <laughs> well, last night, the Phillies and their fans got a chance to sit back and watch a five-hour-plus ball game. It lasted 15 innings, and then finally in the 15th inning, a little small ball for the Phillies to pull out the victory. Yeah, it was nice to see the Phillies utilize the small ball, small ball part of the game, and it's something that you can win games with a home run, and you can win games by setting guys up and getting them in the scoring position, and that's exactly what happened here. Grady Sizemore led the inning off with a base hit, a, a sacrifice bunt by Ben Revere, an intentional walk of Chase Utley, and Ryan Howard. With the big single in the small ball era here with the Phillies, <laughs> driving Grady Sizemore and to allow us to go home and get some sleep. Get some sleep. Now, the particulars from last night's ball game included Howard picking up both RBIs for the Phillies. Hector Neris picked up the victory, his first major league appearance, his first major league win, and then he was optioned out to make room for tonight's starter, uh, David Buchanan. Kyle Kendrick pitched well. Dallas Keuchel pitched well, but the Phillies' bullpen 14 strikeouts in eight innings last night in relief. Yeah, the Phillies bullpen last night was superb. And this is, again, we've seen a lot of this during the course of the season. We've been through a little bit of a lull, but last night the bullpen was fantastic. And Antonio Bastardo really put an exclamation point on that by being sharp. He was ahead in the count. He was able to finish guys off with his fastball and with his slider and really threw the ball well and was very dominant. The way he can be, I, I believe, on a daily basis. All right. Well, the Phillies certainly needed that last night. They needed everybody to contribute to the victory over the Houston Astros. So they took game one. What's in store for game number two? Well, we shall find out. We have two pitchers back up for the minor leagues. Brad Peacock making a 16th start for the Astros in the big leagues after one start down in the minor leagues. And David Buchanan making his 11th major league start. Well, that balloon, it was here last night with everybody else. It settled in like everybody else for the long haul. We'll be back with lineups and first pitch right after this. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. By Toyota, the annual clearance event is going on now. Toyota, let's go places. By Citizens Bank, introducing one deposit checking. Keeping things simple is helping you bank better. And by Independence Blue Cross, the most preferred health plan in the region. Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless.
already up on the mound, warming up, getting set for his return to the big leagues. As the crowd settles in for game two between the Phils and the Astros, let's take a look at the Astros starting lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Leading it off at second base, Jose Altuve, then Robbie Grossman and Chris Carter. John Singleton is at first base batting cleanup. Matt Dominguez, the third baseman, hits fifth. Carlos Corpor in the catcher bat sixth. At the bottom third of Mariznick, Pettit, or Petit, excuse me, and Peacock. And they'll face right hander David Buchanan. JB making his return from the minor leagues. He was good before he went down, and he was good in his last start at AAA. Yeah, he's coming off of a, actually the season of six and two in the minor leagues with a 3.95 with the Iron Pigs, and he's actually thrown the ball for the most part when he's been here in Philadelphia very well, very aggressive, four pitch pitcher, fastball, curveball, cutter, change up. There you see a first pitch uh, fastball, and Altuve gets a base hit to left field. But you know, I like the way David competes. He's not afraid, and he comes at you as a, as a pitcher. He's got a five and five record, and you know, again, this is a, a nice little showcase for David Buchanan. His last start, which was on July 10th, he went seven innings, allowed four hits and one run. It was a 9-1 victory over the Milwaukee Brewers. We were flying back from Milwaukee. That's when he received word that he would go down to AAA before the All-Star break. He delivers a strike to Robbie Grossman. Grossman was one for five last night. We'll be giving some odd numbers, if only because there was a lack of offense in last night's ball game. Altuve, keep an eye on him. He has 44 stolen bases. That one's out to right field. Marlon Bird on the run, and he tracks it down. All right, one out, runner at first. It means only one thing. Our Nissan keys to tonight's ball game. Well, my first key is getting back to basics offensively, and that's get them on, get them over, get them in. And that's actually how the Phillies won the game last night. Again, if you're not scoring a lot of runs, you've got to do some small things, and that's exactly what they need to do. Uh, and the other one would be to win this game tonight, and that would be a back to back series win. So I think that's. Important too here for the Phillies. Yeah, they had defeated the Arizona Diamondbacks uh, in that series before we left on the last road trip. Here's Chris Carter. Runner goes, pitches a strike. The throw by Nieve is not in time. As Altuve picks up his 45th stolen base of the year. Honestly, Nieve did everything he could to make that throw. Yeah, Altuve got a, a real good jump, and he is quite fast and. It really wasn't a close play at second base. I guess if the throw was in the base path, it might have been a little closer. A little low, one ball and one strike. Carter last night was 0 for 5, but he has hit in 10 of his last 14 games for the Astros. He is, of course, their leader in home runs with 22. Astros commit to this ball game with a record of 47 and 66. 22 and a half games back in the West. Louis, meanwhile, at 50 and 63. There's a line drive base hit to left field. Sizemore comes to it quickly. Altuve had a hole just to make sure that ball wasn't caught. And the Astros have two hits here in the first. And Jonathan Singleton will be the batter. Here's a fastball. It looks like it's inner third, slightly up. Then he's behind in the count. It's using predominantly his fastball here, the first three hitters. So, and now he's in a in a situation where he's got first and third. Uh, really hasn't established another pitch, uh, but is in a little bit of a jam here. So again, getting it out here, getting a double play. If you give up a run, okay. But ideally, you know, the ideal situation here is to get your double play, get a pop up in the infield, and keep the situation men on first and third. Well, speaking of double play, Singleton has hit it to four of them. The Phillies have the overshift on against him. First pitch is at the knees, according to Mark Carlson. Now, if he can stay down there all night, he can have a fun night. And get that pitch. Yes. Scott Barry's at first, Jeff Nelson at second. Laz Diaz over at third. By the way, hats off to Laz Diaz, the third base umpire. You know, we talk about umpires all the time, whether they're good, bad, inconsistent, consistent. 
I thought he had a really good night last night considering 15 innings. But even beyond that I thought he was rather consistent. He was consistent. He kept the pace of the game going. The pitchers kept the pace of the game going by throwing strikes. It all worked out well. Five hours later. Free baseball. A lot of free baseball last <laughs> night Tom. Two balls one strike to Singleton. Actually have three veteran umpires in this crew. Carlson behind the plate. Nelson and Laz Diaz. Two balls and two strikes. Singleton will strike out. 76 strikeouts in a very limited amount of time in the big leagues. I think that was the attempt right there to try to get him to chase the high fastball. Now you really have to come back into the zone. I don't think you're really looking to walk anybody here, but again, it doesn't really hurt. It still keeps a double play in order. It just puts two guys in the scoring position. Chopper right side. Utley will come to it. He'll get the runner at second. That's it. The run scores. One nothing Houston. So at RBI for Singleton, ball just wasn't hit sharp enough for a double play. 32nd RBI of the year, so a fielder's choice. And Matt Dominguez is the batter. On the outside corner, 0 and 1. Last seven starts for Buchanan in the big leagues, and he's made 10 overall. 4 and 3 with an ERA of 3.67. You can see his confidence had built with his last couple of starts, in particular his uh, final one against the Brewers. Everybody has a different pace to them. As far as they're accepting or realizing that they're in the big leagues, but he, he looked he looked like he was getting comfortable up here in the big leagues. That's a great point, Tom, and I and I think you know, David has really taken a uh, taken advantage of, of utilizing his veteran teammates to try to become that sponge and learn from them and ask questions and talk. You don't see that with a lot of young players, so I, I give him a lot of credit for that. And I give his teammates a lot of credit too. That ball's hit toward third on one hop. And Ashley will finish it off. One run does score for the Astros in the first. They get a couple of hits. They leave one. Middle of the first. It's the Astros one and the Phillies coming up. First inning run and a ground out by Jonathan Singleton. Let's see how Ryan Sandberg will counter here tonight. The lineup's brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Ben Revere, Jimmy Rollins, and Chase Utley. 
followed by Ryan Howard, Marlon Bird, and Grady Sizemore in left field. The bottom third of Will Nieves catching. Cody Ashey at third base and David Buchanan out on the mound. And they'll face right hander Brad Peacock, who has pitched one game against the Phillies in his big league career. He also is back from the minor leagues. Three and seven with an ERA of 4.93. Kind of mixed, uh, mixed results for Peacock this year, Jamie. There have been outings where he's been really good. But his final outing in the big leagues before he went down to the minor leagues, he got roughed up by the Oakland A's. Yeah, he got roughed up by the Oakland A's, and if I'm not mistaken, the outing before that, he only went like a third of an inning. So, you know, it, it, you're right, Tom. It has been a little bit up and down for him. And again, you know, when you're trying to figure things out and you're on a team that's really struggling, it's, it makes it even more difficult. But again, a kid with uh, some pretty good stuff. You know, he's got a low 90s fastball, a curveball, a slider, and a changeup. 41st round pick of the net. So I think that's really cool. A kid that's went really late in the draft has worked his way into the big leagues and trying to figure out how to become a consistent major league pitcher. Well, the first pitch to Revere is outside. One ball, no strikes. Ben last night was two for six in the 15 inning game, overall hitting 303. He's been one of the hottest hitters in the National League over the last 30 days. Over the last 13 games, you see he's hitting 462, and he just added to that with a first inning single the opposite way. Well, Ben just continues to use the big part of the field, and I'm going to call that a line drive. Hits a line drive to left field, you know, and, and this is what your prototypical leadoff hitter is supposed to do: find a way to get on base. Last night, 15th inning, he lays down a superb bunt. You know, to get Grady Sizemore into scoring position. I mean, these are the little things that you're asking guys like Ben Revere to do. And he's doing it very well and doing it very consistently right now. Well, Jimmy Rollins, who was 0 for 7 last night, is up with a rudder at first. Swing and a miss, no balls in one strike. The Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Taylor Pinnell of Ewing, New Jersey. Phillies hit a home run in today's ball game, then Taylor. Will win a hundred dollars. Oh and two. Ball chop foul. Rollins 0 for his last nine. He's obviously in a little bit of a a slump right now. His average is down to 239. He didn't have a bad road trip. He hit 280 on the road trip, and he had a very good month of July power-wise with seven home runs. Pulls that one fair down the right field line. It hits the half ball and kicks in front of Robbie Grossman. Rollins on his way to second. Revere stops at third. A double for Jimmy Rollins. His 19th of the year. And the Phils have two in scoring position here at the bottom of the first inning. And for Jimmy Rollins, that's 799 career extra base hits. Here you see a a cutter that really backs up looks like it's in the outer third of the plate again we've seen this as I look at it as a mistake as an 0 2 pitch that he's not able to bury we've seen that backfire in the Phillies pitching a lot early in the season now it works for them. And a great chase up to the plate. First base up fire uh, Scott Barry is signaling it one Sam well saying that that was a fair ball all the way that the ball hit the glove of Jonathan Singleton just barely hit the glove of Singleton. We were so I know I was so focused on whether that ball was inside the chalk line. As it turns out it was fair anyway. You could probably hear that from from down there. We obviously we can't hear that but because I don't know if you even see that down there. Well, I couldn't tell I, I saw it just a little bit on the replay. Infield is back for Utley. And I believe the catcher, Corporan, may have been crossed up. At least it looked that way, but he was able to grab it. Yeah, maybe 
just a little bit. Oh yeah. Scott Barry I thought was making a signal that it, it hit the glove but he wasn't he just was pointing fair. The ball was pretty hard to hit too. It's almost by Singleton. One ball no strikes to Utley Utley was one for four last night a couple of walks. He is Revere at third Rollins at second. Base hit should give the Phillies the lead. Marisnik has an excellent arm in center field. Grossman has a decent arm in right field. Fly ball, shallow left. Carter comes running in. Revere goes back to tag. Carter makes the catch. It's certainly not deep enough to score, Revere. And there's one out. Let's take a look at tonight's current weather conditions. Beautiful night here in Philadelphia. It's brought to you by Oliver Heating and Cooling. Visit OliverHeatCool.com. 81 degrees. A slight, a very slight breeze of seven miles per hour. Honestly, if you call that seven miles per hour, then I, my 60 time is going to be in the in the fives. <laughs> Good night to go out to Bulls Barbecue. Get yourself some ribs. Howard takes outside. Ryan, two RBIs last night. 17 home runs, 50 or 65 runs batted in. Left field, that's well hit. It's going to go past Carter and take a hop off the wall. One run is in. Rollins coasting home. He'll score, and the Phillies are out top two to one. And Ryan Howard, a two run double. Four RBIs the last two games. Well, he provided the offense last night, and now tonight. Here in the first inning last night, he hits a solo home run to left center field. To give the Phillies a one nothing lead and then in the wee hours in the 15th inning he hits the seeing gets his seeing eye single through the shift and then tonight he gets a fastball actually was kind of down and in and he pushed it off his body for a double to left center field to drive in two to give the Phillies a lead two to one here in the bottom of the first inning 12 doubles now of the year for Howard and here's Marlon Bird 0 for his last nine. Marlin overall hitting 269, 21 home runs, 63 runs batted in. Oh, and I like how the Phillies have put a little pressure here on Brad Peacock early in the game. See how he's going to adjust or adapt to being into in this situation. Yeah, two extra base hits and one single in this first inning. By the way, Jamie, not for nothing, but those two RBIs for Howard give him 67. He's now fourth in the National League in RBIs. Seven away from the leader, Giancarlo Stanton. Now he's had a ton of opportunities, more than anybody else with runners in scoring position in the National League, at least going into last night's game. I don't think that's changed all that much. But he's in scoring position. He's given the Phillies a 2 1 lead. And it's two balls and one strike to Marlon Bird. Good hold. It's 3 and 1. Bird is aboard. That puts runners on first and second with one out. 
Brent Straub, who sort of uh, formed a path out to the mound last night, makes his first visit out to the mound tonight. Well, if you look at Peacock's last two pitches right there, both cutters down and away from Marlin, and they know he respects you know, Marlin's ability as a, as an offensive threat, but he never really gave himself a chance to throw a strike there. Both of those pitches were well off down and off the plate. So you're really not giving yourself a chance for contact and here's where we always talk about pitching the contact. You, know, you, 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 know, you have to pick your times to pitch the contact but if the ball's that far off the plate out of your hand the ball doesn't look like a strike and the hitter's going to take it. Especially when he's ahead in the count. And that's really been the case after uh, Revere and Jimmy Rollins everybody else has been ahead in the count so far in the game. And it makes a big difference in that that pitcher hitter battle. And we've seen it many times with the Phillies this year when the pitchers are ahead versus behind. And again, we're seeing it here with Peacock. Well, let's see if they can capitalize. Grady Sizemore. Sizemore hitting 347 with the Phillies. A home run, five runs batted in. Sizemore already has 26 hits in a Phillies uniform, six doubles of the home run. He was two for four in last night's ball game. He got the 15th inning start. He didn't even start last night's game, and he had four at bats. One ball, one strike. Well, for me, it seems like since Grady's arrival, and he when he's been first inserted into the lineup, he seems to be in the middle of everything, doesn't he? He does. Yep. He either comes up with the bats with guys on, or he's already on base in scoring position. I really like what he's the value he's added to this ball club. Toyota Major League scoreboard. Boy, the Braves lost again. The Mariners win it 7 3. Atlanta's lost eight straight. They're fortunate that the Nationals have lost the last two. But they're three and a half games out. Miami, five and a half games out, although they're trailing. Uh, they're leading, excuse me, Pittsburgh right now. Sizemore takes inside three and one. Boy, this is one kooky division, the National League East. <laughs> Just reading some of the articles down in Atlanta, though, I think there are a lot of folks that think that the Braves are in a little bit of trouble at this point. Fortunate that they're just three and a half out. Sizemore lifts it down the left field line, and it's going to slice toward the crowd and out of play. The thing I noticed with the Braves, I just I don't feel like with the free agent signings that they've had over the course of the season. Or over, or over the offseason, and some of the you know, younger players that they have you know, signed to long term deals, I don't think any of them have really played to the expectation that the organization has set out for them. Or the free agents that have come in are not playing to their career numbers. Yeah, that's very true. Three balls, two strikes to Sizemore. Grady takes ball four, and the Phillies have them loaded. And Will the Aves will get a chance to bat here. Lowest percentage of strikes among the American League leaders. Brad Peacock is fifth in that category. It's shocking that C.J. Wilson is second in that category. I'm not surprised by Obaldo Jimenez, and I'm not as surprised about Justin Masterson this year. He's now over with St. Louis, but I'm really surprised about C.J. Wilson. Yeah, I am too. Again, CJ is a guy that has to pitch to contact, and he one time he was a quality pitcher with with very good stuff. And tentatively, the Phillies will see him next week in Anaheim. The Aves sends one down the right field line. Grossman was playing way in, and it's a foul ball. Oh man! So much for the shift on that particular swing. Davis got to the first base bag and he just clapped his hands more out of frustration that that ball just didn't stay fair. I don't know that you could put any shift on that they would get to that ball right there. That's true. Drove that drove that ball very well down the right field line. Unfortunately, it with the amount of time it was in the air just sliced 
into foul territory. It's a shame he didn't touch it there and go off the end of his glove while he was in fair territory. No balls, one strike to Nieves. Breaking ball outside, one and one. I think Corporan was trying to buy that pitch right there. It looked like it was out of, off the plate. It might have been slightly off the plate, but I think uh, Peacock really wanted that pitch. But if you're not around the plate, you can't expect to get those borderline pitches. Now this will be the 25th pitch of the inning. Love of Corporan coming home is Ryan Howard, and he's going to score. Three to one, Phillies on top. Wild pitch. And runners on second and third. And it's two and two to Nieves. Well, that's good heads up base running by Ryan Howard right there. That ball really didn't get far. Pass Corporan, I don't think he could initially find it, but Ryan Howard got on his horse rather quickly and lumbered down that third baseline and actually scored quite easily without without even a throw. I like that. I like that aggressive base running. Get a couple RBIs in your first at bat. You're moving a little bit. There's a fly ball to left field that may be deep enough. Carter over toward the line. Bird is tagging, and Bird's going to head home. The throw by Carter is offline, way offline. It's a 4 1 ball game. You had to figure since Carter has a an average to below average arm, that Bird was going to challenge there. Yeah, and he kind of kind of camps under it. He really he could have had a little more momentum coming to that ball, and then he kind of pulled it. He had no chance. Good inning for the Phils. They've scored four runs. Now they're going to walk Ashley intentionally. Well, it's nice to see the things work in the Phillies' way. Uh, you know. A lot of times we've seen the Phillies do this this year. Very true. So it's nice to see the roles reversed a little bit. We're we're with everybody else around the Delaware Valley. Uh, I just asked Carl Graver, our statistician, when was the last time the Phillies had a four-run first inning? So we'll check on that. It. I don't recall. First and second now for David Buchanan. David got a hit when he was up here, or did he not? He's still not. searching for that hit. 0 for 17. Okay. I was thinking he had one. He had one down in Triple A this year. He's one for four. He has three for his career in the minor leagues. Well, he's due. Why not tonight? On the outside corner. Drive base hit into right center field. His first major league hit, and he's going to get his first major league RBI. And Buchanan mm. is going to be out at second base. 5 1 Phillies. They may hold the defense here. Ryan Sandberg's coming out. So they'll hold the defense. Mark Carlson's going to go track down the Astros while Ryan Sandberg goes out to talk to the falling Jeff Nelson. Take a look. I, it didn't look like he got him before his foot at the bag. It didn't look like he, he got him before the foot at the bag. Now the Phillies are also, while they're watching this, trying to get the Astros to, <laughs> to give David Buchanan the ball. He 
Yeah, he's in there. And they're going to review this. So this inning may continue with the Phillies up 5 1. And runners on second and third. Nelson and Laz Diaz will take a look at it. A lot of the Astros are heading back out of the dugout. All right, so they gave they gave him the wrong baseball, so now they'll get the right one. Nice swing here by David Buchanan. Yeah, a little, uh, little inside out swing and drives the ball over Altuve's head for a single. Got a little happy there trying to get to second base, but yeah, he did maybe overextend himself a little bit, but. Jeff Nelson to his credit he tried to keep his head on what was happening he was noticeably out of position <laughs> although you know some people sitting on their backside are in better position but I don't know if he had a clear view of uh, Petit laying down the tag on David Buchanan this is where replay certainly will benefit Jeff Nelson benefit the Phillies if they you know if they see what we we're seeing, he should be safe at second base. Look at it here. Petit has the ball, but he misses him and the foot's on the bag, and now he tags him. I think Jeff can also catch a little razzin from his umpire buddy. I would think he will, and I think he'll probably catch some razzin from Jimmy Rollins when he goes out to his position eventually. Now that looks like it's conclusive, that it's clear. But they're taking a little bit of time to review. I mean, every Replay that we've shown you at home. Those are the same replays, of course, that are at the disposal of the people in New York. Every replay that we've shown you, it looks like his foot is on the second base bag prior to the tag. Peacock, the pitcher, is already heading back. Well, now he's just dancing around. He's got a little nervous energy going. And here we go. Maybe not. They may be also looking to make sure that Cody Ashley didn't leave third, which he didn't. They have to look at all that stuff, just positioning. Well, David Buchanan has his first major league hit, his first major league RBI. We were fixing to see that for quite a while. And we finally have seen him get a base hit. And ultimately, he'll go to second base on the throw. This is the where it's kind of surprising. It's three and a half minutes. I guess the the problem is on the angles. I mean, we're assuming that his foot's in the bag and he hasn't tagged him. Maybe that's what they're trying to get a clear indication of. Well, here comes the answer. See right there, the tag is not made and his foot is on the bag. Now the tag. Ooh, they just called him out. Jeff Nelson called him out, and I believe that's because they don't have clear evidence. To overturn it. So this is going to be one of those that the call stands, not confirmed, stands. 5 1 Phillies as we go to the second.
take on the New York Mets after the Astros uh, head out of town on Friday. It's a game one of a four game series. The Roy Halladay bobble figurine brought to you by Toyota. In fact Toyota will sponsor the entire weekend. It's alumni weekend here at Citizens Bank Park. Charlie Manuel will be inducted into the Phillies Wall of Fame on Saturday night. Tickets can be purchased anytime by going to Phillies.com. Phillies up 5 1. And Carlos Corporan will lead things off. Corporan 252 with five home runs. First pitch is over for a strike, 0 and 1. Off the end of the bat, out towards center. Ben Revere wanders a little bit, makes the catch, one out. And Jake Marisnik making his fifth start. In an Astros uniform in center field will be the hitter. Well, Buchanan could front run a little bit here, Jamie. He is a kid who we've seen throw strikes, and this is a prime opportunity to throw some strikes. Well, here's a situation where he just needs to continue to do what he started out this game with doing, but also what he was doing before he left here and before he went back to Lehigh Valley is continue to pound the bottom of the strike zone. Balls in one strike. This is we've seen the month of July, the Houston Astros led the American League for the month of July in home runs. So they can drive the ball out of the ballpark. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, says the first base umpire. 0 and 2. Always have to respect the man with the bat in his hand. <laughs> That's what I've always it's been one of my mottos. He's got a bat in his hand, he can do some damage. And it really doesn't matter, you know, you look at averages, you look at, you know, 0 for this or you know, 7 for 10. It, if he's got a bat in his hand, he can do something. Inside, 2 at 2. Change up from David Buchanan. If he's in a slump, you want to keep him in that slump. You let him get out of a slump when he moves on to the next team. And this is one of those situations too. You know, you get ahead in the count like David was right there. 0-2 went to 1-2, 2-2. Now it's 3-2. To me, it with a four-run lead. Early in the game, you got to throw strikes. Get to the point where it's 2 2. This next pitch has to be a strike. You don't want to go 3 2. Chopper foul past Pat Listash in the third base coach's box. And seven pitches already in this at bat. Float into left center field a base hit. Revere's got to get to it quickly. Marisnik runs pretty well. And ben holds him to a single. And that'll bring, bring Gregorio Petit to the plate. Let's check in with Greg Murphy. Murph? All right, thanks a lot, Tom. Well, uh, we all know 15 innings last night before the Phillies were able to get a victory. They have now played 1,032 innings so far this season. That is the most in baseball. And how did they get there? Well, that means they've played. Their fair share of extra inning games. It was the 15th extra inning game. That's fourth best in all of baseball. Uh, but the Phillies have also played five games this year that has, last, that has lasted 14 innings or more and six games that have been 13 innings plus. Uh, so that is the most since 1980. And the, uh, the 14 inning plus is a franchise record. It ties a franchise record that was set back in 1958. So lots and lots of extra baseball so far this season. I think uh, most would agree, at least the guys in uniform, that nine would be just fine tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'd agree with that. Anyway. I would think that everybody would vote for that, Murph. One ball and no strikes to Petit. 278 hitter, one home run, two RBIs. 
Chopper over to third. That's a fair ball, obviously, and it's a left field, a base hit. Runners on first and second with one out. And Peacock will bat. Well, Petit now is hitting uh, six straight starts. How about some of the other things that came out of last night's ball game? Ball game. You know, Murph's talking about uh, five games of 14 innings or more, matching 1958. The Phillies bullpen, eight innings, 14 strikeouts. 14 strikeouts is the most for Phillies uh, pen since 1900. Wow. Now the other note too is Antonio Bastardo, uh, for the second time in his career, as that ball was bunted out and missed, it's 0 1. Strikes out six in a two inning outing. Remember we were talking about that. He did it uh, earlier in his career. He struck out six in a row. Last night, he struck out six. He did allow a base runner in the middle there. We had struck out five in a row, then walked right. the guy, right? Yep. Then get the six strikeout. Breaking ball 0 and 2. Well, that's never happened before for a relief pitcher. To have two outings in a career. Pretty cool. Yeah. I like what David Buchanan did right there. He threw a sinker for the first pitch. He bunted through it. Then he threw a curveball. It wasn't Peacock wasn't sure what to do with it. And he bunts at it and misses two outs. That's a strikeout. First one for Buchanan. And now instead of two outs, second and third. Got two outs, men on first and second, with a pretty good hitter at the plate. A guy that makes a lot of contact and doesn't strike out a great deal. Yeah, Altuve picked up career hit number 157. His first time up. He's now two for seven in the series. Outside one ball, no strikes. Squib out towards second base. Utley is up with it. And Buchanan works around the two hits to retire the Astros. No runs, two hits, two men left. Middle of the second. Back to the top of the order when we return.
Be the first to know breaking news on all your Philly teams right from your smartphone, plus all your Philly sports news and scores when you're on the go. Download the free CSN Philly Sports app today. I don't know who brought it up. Maybe it was you, Jamie, in our meeting today. But somebody should have Matt have an app following him around these next few days with his buddies from Canada. Huh. There's Matt. There he is. And there are his buddies from Canada. But that's just the beginning of it. Those are three of his buddies. He's got more coming in this weekend. I wonder how the golf match went today. Well, he's awfully sunburned. So he obviously didn't use any sunblock this afternoon. Maybe he wasn't in the woods very much. That's a good point. Ben Revere lead it off. No one won to Revere. Those guys are going to be tired when this week is over with. Yes, they will. The ball, one strike to Revere. He singled and started the rally. And the first of the Phillies batted around. And he serves that one foul into the seats over the tarp. Off the plate. Peacock hustling to get to it. This is going to be a tough play. He won't get him. Well, ben Revere is getting hits all kinds of ways. He hits the top of it here. Tops it. I don't know if it was off the plate or not, but Peacock should have just put that in his back pocket. Had no chance. Yeah, off the plate. Tops it. Guys with that kind of speed. You've got no chance. First time with five or more runs in the first inning since September of last year. They scored six against the Padres. Rollins pops it up. Dominguez, the third baseman, he's under it. On August 18th, the Phillies will. Again, play little interleague baseball here at Citizens Bank Park. They'll take on the Seattle Mariners. Tuesday, the 19th, all fans receive the Ryan Howard bobble figurine. Wednesday is a Citizens Bank business person special. You can get tickets for all three games of that series by going to Phillies.com. It'd be interesting if the Phillies get to see King Felix in that series. He's having a fine year. Oh, did he pitch well last night or what? Yes, he did. Actually, having a fine career. You guys got electric stuff. Chase Utley fly to left his first time up and he lines one out towards center field Marisnik. Well he plays shallow but he was able to track that one for the second out. And that'll bring Ryan Howard to the plate. Felix Hernandez is a 1.97 earned run average. He has 12 wins. I would think he's the odds on favorite at this point to win another Cy Young Award. Now, a lot can happen, but he's second in strikeouts. He's tied uh, for third in wins. There goes Revere. The pitch is taken for a strike. The throw to second, not in time. 31 stolen bases for Ben Revere. All right, Howard has chance to pick up another RBI. Then gets a great jump here and Peacock throws a curveball so it gives Perkin uh, Perkin uh, not a great opportunity to, to throw the speedy Ben Revere out at second base. Change up low one ball one strike.
swing and a miss. A strikeout of Howard. That's the first strikeout for Peacock. The Phillies leave one in scoring position here in the second. No runs, one hit, one man left. We'll go to the third. Phillies up five. One. Be a question. Log on to Phillies.com. Go to the fan section for all the information and please submit your answer on the subject line. All right, Jamie, here's the question. What Astro holds the club record for career steals with 487? Hmm. The answer will be revealed in just a little bit. Jamie's already put his answer down. We'll go to the third. Robbie Grossman leads it off. By the way, that pitch that Buchanan made to Altuve to finish up the second changeup. That's their best hitter. And he was able to get him out front off the end of the bat, a little roller. I was thinking right along the same lines with him. And he's got a very good changeup, as the league is starting to find out. Off the outside corner, one ball, two strikes. And a call, strike three. One away, Chris Carter's coming up. Murph, I know you talked to Will Nieves about catching David Buchanan today. What, what were his, his thoughts catching him for the first time? Well, yeah, you know, he hasn't caught him in a major league game, but he has caught him in spring training. And, uh, you know, he echoed the thoughts that Jamie was just saying right there. He said the most impressive thing about David Buchanan from a, from a pitching standpoint is that changeup. He's got a very, very good changeup. And, uh, you know, he said that mentality-wise, he's kind of a bulldog. We've heard Ron Sandberg talk about that, about how he, you know, kind of uh, is involved in every pitch mentally and, uh, and just goes out there and competes and battles. And that's the kind of thing that uh, if you're behind the plate that you want to see out of your pitcher. So Davis was excited about getting a chance to work with him today. Well, Will's done a nice job as the Phillies backup catcher this year. Two balls and one strike to Chris Carter. I personally think that if Dave as David Buchanan gets a little more seasoning and learns how to locate his fastball a little bit better on both sides of the plate. He's going to gain far more confidence as you see a pop up there to Cody Ashen for the second out of the end. But as he gains that confidence, I think you're going to see a pitcher blooming right in front of your eyes. Is he going to be a number one, number two guy? Maybe not, but he's going to be a good, solid starting pitcher. And I believe a lot of it's because of his mentality the way he battles, the way he fights. But he's got to maintain the four pitches he has. If he if he backs off of one of those pitches and becomes a three pitch pitcher, I don't think he'll have the opportunity to be become the pitcher that he really wants to be. Now part of that is because I, I would think if he doesn't have one of those pitches, let's say he becomes a three pitch pitcher, 
Well, I mean, there's games, yeah, when he's not going to have all four pitches. But right. what I'm trying to say is, if he says, ah, you know, my curveball isn't, my, you know, a, a really good pitch for me, it's just stick in my back pocket and not use it at all, and just become a three pitch pitcher and go out there with three pitches. I don't think he's going to be able to, to be that kind of pitcher. I'll go out on a limb and say that. I just his personality, I think, allows him to be that kind of a pitcher. Because you know he's going to continually try to get better and work at it, and that's what I love seeing and being around him. I mean, it's just it's really enjoyable to watch. Well, he gets over to cover, and Ryan Howard will flip to him. Pretty easy inning for him here in the third. First one, two, three inning of the night for Buchanan. We'll go to the bottom of the third inning. Marlon Bird will get a chance to lead things off when we come back. Brought to you by Thomas Jefferson University Hospitals. Call 1 800 Jeff now for an appointment. By WB Mason. You can't go wrong when you buy right. And by Dodge. Visit Dodge.com or your local dealer today. We'll go to the bottom of the third. Marlon Bird is up for the second time. Marlon walked his first time up. Marlon's walk and Sizemore's walk. Were pretty big in that first inning when the Phillies scored the five runs. This Peacock was really struggling to find his command. You know, sometimes if you just let the pitcher get himself into trouble, he will. I think, he's, I think that's exactly what happened to Peacock there in the first inning. Fights it off and fouls it. Past Pete McCannon. Tonight's game is also available in Spanish. Just use the SAP button on your television or change the language through the menu on your cable box. Check swing. He tried to go back with that same curveball. Peacock, the last time he faced the Phillies, went five and two thirds. He didn't allow a run. That was when he was with the Washington Nationals. There's a line drive right at Jose Altuve. He was traded from the Nationals uh, out to the Oakland A's in the Gio Gonzalez trade, and then came to Houston along with Chris Carter in the Jed Lowry trade. Gonzalez has certainly helped the Nationals, and Lowry has helped the A's these last couple of years. Here's Grady Sizemore, who scored a run after walking his first time. Pulls
Pulls that one to first. Scooped up by Singleton. Hey, there are two outs. Kind of figure that Carlos Ruiz wasn't going to play today after catching 15 innings last night. Neither catcher's playing from last night. Yeah. Neither team took batting practice on the field today because of the Powell softball game. But Carlos was underneath taking some BP with Will Nieves earlier today. Before regular batting practice. Tell you what, I played with Will a little bit with the Rockies two years ago. Played against him when he first came up to the big leagues in Washington. I don't recall him having the confidence in his swing like he has right now. He's just letting it fly. What if there comes a point where you just say, you know what, I'm just, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna let it loose. Well, he's got a plan with it. He does. He really does. He has a plan with it. He's had a number of hits this year, a couple of big hits. And I just like his aggressiveness at the plate. Well, this will be his 70th at bat, hitting 275. He had a sack fly his last time up. And now the 0 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him with a fastball that was bearing in. A 1 2 3 third inning for Brad Peacock. So we played our first three. Nothing to bang your head about, Fanatic. Bank Park, the Powell softball game. There was Marshall Harris, who uh, was able to show off his legs on this one, trying to beat out a double play. He was able to do that. Matt O'Donnell, boy, he really laid out to try to pick that one up. That was a tough play. Just missed that one. Chance for some of the uh, TV, radio, newspaper folks from around the area. There's Ryan Lawrence, who covers the Phils, getting a chance to come out and show their athleticism. And their abilities on the softball diet. There's Jennifer Frederick. She's played in this the last few years. Again, it's an annual event. First at the vet, then here at Citizens Bank Park. The final was 2 nothing. Not a whole lot of offense, but it was all for a great cause. Raising money for the Police Athletic League of Philadelphia. There are some of the sponsors who were such a big part of it. And for more on it, here's Greg Murphy. Murph. All right, thank you very much, Tom. Well, Ted Qualley is the executive director of the Police Athletic League as uh, Matt Dominguez hits that one into the gap. He's going to get two out of that. But, uh, Ted, uh, we just showed some of the highlights of the uh, Police Athletic League softball game. We'll talk about that in a minute. But first and foremost, let's talk about the, the relationship between the Police Athletic League and the Phillies because it goes way back. 
It does go way back. Uh, not quite as, uh, as long as Utley, Rollins, and Howard playing together, but it goes back a long time. In fact, this is the 36th year of this uh, Pal Night at the Phillies. It's an amazing opportunity for us uh, to bring about 200 kids here and see not just the game, but all the jobs and all the things that go on behind the scenes at a Phillies game. You know, these are potential career opportunities for these kids, so it's an exciting night for everyone. You know, and I don't think a lot of folks are familiar with the Police Athletic League and what a terrific program it is, but really, what is the mission, as you guys uh, set out to each and every year in conjunction with the Philadelphia Police Department to help these kids? So the mission's simple. It's cops helping kids, and if Commissioner Ramsey was able to stay, he would be telling you that. Uh, but in a nutshell, it's a police officer in a uh, gymnasium. We have 20 youth development centers across the city of Philadelphia, and it's an opportunity for those cops to help these kids in a host of ways. You know, basketball and baseball are some of our biggest sports draws, but it's mentoring, it's, it's arts and culture programming, all overseen and guided by Philadelphia Police Department. It's amazing. And nights like this certainly generate funds for the Police Athletic League, but uh, the folks can get involved as well. Yeah, you know, this is a fundraiser, and we have different fundraisers throughout the year. But, you know, anyone can visit phillypal.com to learn about the organization, to learn about how to help. And, you know, there's 20 PAL centers across the city, so there's plenty of opportunities. All right, now Tom mentioned the, uh, the celebrity softball game ahead of time, and he mentioned folks showing off their athletic prowess. I didn't see that. Did you see that? Did you see that? <laughs> so we use that term celebrity loosely. No, um, no, it was great. It's, it's, it's wonderful to see. The, the, the entire community come, come out to support the kids, to support the police department. Uh, you know, to see someone like Marshall Harris out there reliving the glory days. Uh, just a good time for everyone. Absolutely. Yeah, Marshall uh, was definitely showing off his athletic prowess. Uh, uh, thanks, Ted. Thanks so much for everything you do. And uh, congratulations on another great year with the relationship with the Phils and the Police Athletic League. Yeah, we appreciate it. And thank you and the Phillies. All right, Tom, let's send it back to you. All right, Murph. Thank you very much. I was trying to be nice. I mean, as we get older, we can't do things the way we used to. Speak for yourself, Tom. Here's Marshall having a little trouble at first base. Oh, well, the throw kind of took him off the bag. Look, <laughs> somebody's got to go get the ba go get the softball, Marshall. It's a 5-2 ball game here in the top of the fourth on a sack fly by Jake Marisnik that brought home Matt Dominguez who led off with a double. Gregorio Petit, he singled his first time up. One ball, one strike. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Nationals are shutting out the Mets three nothing. Adam LaRoche, a two run home run. Breaking ball and a call. Strike three. That was a very good pitch by David Buchanan. Third strikeout for Buchanan. He did allow a run in the inning on a sack fly by Jake Marisnik. But he was able to come back, pick up the strikeout. So he's through four. He's allowed two runs so far. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth here in Philadelphia.
brought to you by Delaware Valley Honda. Visit your local Delaware Valley Honda dealer, shophonda.com. By Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. And by Chevrolet. Visit your local dealer at chevydealer.com. Home half of the fourth inning. Philly scored five in the first. Brad Peacock has settled down. He allowed a base runner to start the second, but now has retired six in a row as Cody Ashey will lead it off. Ashey was intentionally walked his first time up. No balls, one strike. Cody was two for six in last night's ball game. Just a bit low, according to Mark Carlson. Part of the reason why the Astros traded Jared Kozark, Kozark for uh, Jake Marisnik, uh, was because they had Brad Peacock in the farm system. That one is pulled down the right field line, angling toward the pole. Fair foul. It is a foul ball. That was a curveball that's left in the middle of the plate. He's not afraid to use that curveball, and it's nice to see somebody sit on there. And. Uh, it may get him off of throwing that curveball now. And he may have end up coming back here and try to sneak a fastball by Cody. Or I'm thinking a changeup. He doesn't throw his changeup a whole lot. Let me take that back. And he's really struggling with his fastball command tonight. I think that's why he's throwing so many breaking balls. 3 2 pitch to Ashy. So we're going to miss. Got it with a high fastball, 94. Back to back strikeouts. One to end the third, another one to begin the fourth. Pulling a doubleheader at the office, WB Mesa's huge selection of Green Mountain Coffee K Cup packs keeps you running and provides fan base satisfaction. Order by 11.30 and get free same day delivery. Who but WB Mason? That was a good fastball. Got Cody to go upstairs a little bit at it. And David Buchanan, who picked up his first major league hit in his last time up, takes it side. Peacock thought that was strike one. Yeah, I think he's having one of those nights. You're saying, I just want to throw it right down the middle, and he just he can't do it. And and then you start fighting yourself. We talked about this a couple nights ago. You start fighting yourself with it, and it goes from bad to worse. Was there a pitch that you could get yourself back with? Was there? A lot of times it was my changeup because uh, I threw it so much. Uh, but also, you know, if I was up in the zone, I would literally I would tell Carlos. Put your glove on the back on the back tip of the plate and I would actually look at the back tip of the plate because I felt like when I was up my eyes would start to drift up and my I would I would follow my eyes for some reason. So I would force myself to look at like skip I think about skipping the ball across home plate and it would bring me back down. Now that worked for me I don't know that it would work for many but that that for whatever reason that helped me. Ben Revere is two for two. But you would think every pitcher has something that they use to try to get themselves back. You would hope. I mean, I wouldn't assume that, but you would hope. There were times I can remember a uh, bullpen I threw in Cincinnati, and I was struggling with the ball up a little bit. And I told I actually had Carlos almost put his glove on the ground, and I threw. You know, I started hitting it, and then it became a game. It, all right, move it. You know, move it a little bit here. Move it. A little. We had a blast in the bullpen. Because when you have a bullpen like, I mean, it wasn't a pregame bullpen, it was a between start bullpen. But it was really, you know, it was challenging, 
but it was fun. No balls, two strikes to Revere with a runner at first. Out towards center field, Mariznik had him played perfectly. On Friday, August 22nd, that's after the Seattle Mariners leave town, the Cardinals will come to town. Three game series, 7.05 on Friday, 7.05 on Saturday. And then Sunday, 135 first pitch. Shop right back to school gym bag, free to fans, 14 and under. You can purchase tickets anytime by going to Phillies.com. Ball on the outside corner. You know, and there were a couple times too, and you know, you have bullpens like that. Felt so confident that I could close my eyes and throw a pitch. That never worked. It's really odd when you don't have your vision, you know, one of your senses. I would think that would be difficult to do. Uh, I've heard of it happen. I've heard of guys being able to throw strikes with their eyes closed. Michael Jordan would shoot free throws with his eyes closed, but he was I, just doing that just to get in the mind of the, of the other team. Oh, I could visualize it, but really going through the act, it's amazing how difficult that is. Rollins doubled his first time up, popped out his last time. And he pulls that one into right field of base hit. Buchanan's going to hold up at second. Robbie Grossman gets it in quickly. So Rollins is two for three. And by the way, last night, remember when Robbie Grossman made that, that diving and catch in foul territory where he, he pulled the grass up? Well, apparently uh, everything was fine. You know, his shoulder was fine, his glove was fine, but his belt buckle stuck in the grass. So that's what was causing him an issue. Hmm. It sort of uh, caught him. It took him a few minutes to get himself back, <laughs> back on his feet out in right field. They were all concerned about whether he had, you know, hurt his leg, hurt his shoulder. If he did something when he dove for that ball, as Utley fouls the first pitch back. Here it is. Apparently his belt buckle. Got stuck in the grass. Looks like it was moving pretty good there. Time is called. In the air to right field. That one is gone. Three run home run for Chase Utley. Number 10. Phillies have tacked on a three spot here in the fourth inning. And they now lead it eight to two. Like a little golf shot from Chase Utley. Chase, who's behind the fastball, gets a change up down and in and looked pretty flat. Stayed with it and drove it into the right field seats for a three run home run. Well, that makes a winner out of Taylor Pinnell of Ewing, New Jersey, on this swing by Chase Utley. Taylor's just won 100 bucks. Six run lead now for the Phils. Ryan Howard is the batter. And he takes a strike. It's 0 1. Over the last uh, 30 days or so, Utley has not really hit for much power. That's just the second home run since the second, or shoot, the 10th of July. Nice swing, though. 10 home runs, 59 runs batted in.
two and one. Struggled in the first, struggling here in the fourth. Pulls that one foul, and it, it is full now, three and two. And Howard is struck out. And the Phillies get three here in the fourth. Uh, the three run bomb by Chase up. Short swing right to the ball. And about six or seven rows back in right field. A little bit of a cushion for David Buchanan. We'll head to the fifth inning here at Citizens Bank Park. Oh, back here at Citizens Bank Park to the fifth inning. Brad Peacock leads it off. He'll take a strike. It's 0 1. Oh, and 2 to Peacock. Peacock struck out his last time up when he attempted to bunt. Balls and two strikes to Peacock. And strikeout number four for David Buchanan. One gone here in the fifth inning. 992 strikeouts now for the Astros. Here you see a really good curveball. It's a very good curveball. I got to believe he went down to Lehigh Valley and spent a little time with that pitch. I think you're right. It has, I think, and you would know better than I would. I think it has more depth than it had when he left. And I think he's gained some confidence with it. I thought he had a good one here when he was here the first time, but he didn't use it much. I don't think he had enough confidence with it. Now I think he's probably gone back to Lehigh Valley, spent some time with it, and regained some confidence with it. Now let me see what I can do with it here at this level. Out towards shortstop, Rollins diving stop, and it kicks out of his glove. Altuve will have a base hit his second of the night. Oh, it's time now for the Jeep Stuff the Fans Trivia Quiz answer. Okay, Jamie, I know you wrote the answer down almost immediately, and I'm quite impressed. What Astro holds the club record for career steals with 487? Well, I'm going to go with uh, Cesar Cedeno with a little jalapeno over the N in Cedeno. A little jalapeno. We don't have it there. 
exactly. You are correct. Yeah. You know what? Last night when I was thinking of Biggio, his was the first name that came up to me. Now, I remember that that name from when I was a kid, Cesar Cedeno. One of the first gloves I ever had was a Cesar Cedeno model. One ball and no strikes to Robbie Grossman. Log back on to Phillies.com. Find out if you're a winner of a Phillies prize pack. Thank you for playing Jeep. Stump the fans. So I guess watching games when I was a little kid has uh, I really benefited. I would Some think of so. These stump the fan questions. It's it's there. It's just whether you can find it exactly. Chopper to first, a foul ball backhanded by Howard, two and one to Robbie Grossman. Sometimes, you know, we'll, somebody will ask me a question. Jack Shore, the great Jack Shore, always has outstanding trivia questions. And they, they test you, they do. And they're good ones. You know, they're ones that you would, uh, that you would normally hear in a, a contest if you're trying to win something. And after he gives you the answer, you're like, ah, oh, of course. Or you walk away and you're trying to rack your brain, and then finally, like a half hour later, it comes to you. After you Google it. <laughs> two balls and two strikes to Grossman. And he stays alive. Chopper toward first. Howard has it. I don't know what Altuve is doing, but it worked because there was no way they could turn the double play. Altuve started dancing back and forth. I don't know if they would have gotten Grossman anyway. They probably would have if Howard gotten rid of it real quick if Buchanan got over to cover. But they do get the lead runner, and they're up 8 2. Yeah, Ryan got off the bag and really. Yep. He didn't see the base runner and all the center or didn't hear him. I think it surprised him. Yeah. Because he still could have just thrown it over to fur over to second. Gotten the lead runner. And still <laughs> maybe turned the double play. I yeah. think Altuve not running. Startled him. There's Chris Carter. He's one for two. Outside one and oh. Line drive base hit it to right field. Grossman's on his way to third and he'll get there. Well, that was a worm burner. I mean, Chris Carter's a strong man and he drilled that ball. And that ball was hit pretty hard. Here's Jonathan Singleton. He is our Geico quote of the day on adjusting to the majors. For the most part, the season has been great. A lot of good things have happened for me. So I'm just trying to take everything in stride. I'm just trying to enjoy everything, play ball, and have fun. He also said that uh, last night was his first time here at Citizens Bank Park. I guess that he had no real reason to be here when the Phillies had him in the system, even though he was playing in Lakewood, uh, which was not too far from here. He said he was very excited when he walked out for the first time and took some extra batting practice. Two balls and no strikes to him.
Well, the thing that David Buchanan, Buchanan benefits from as well is when he's behind in the count, he has a great ability to use his changeup. And he did it with Altuve uh, back in the, uh, what was it, uh, the, second. the second inning? Yeah. To get the third out. Well, he's, he just did it right there to Singleton, too, and then fell the previous pitch, the foul ball. And it was in the dirt. Three balls and one strike. Dominguez on deck. Confidence to go back with a three and one. And the hitters count. Howard's going to play behind Chris Carter at first. Three no. balls, two strikes. No, really throw it again. Back to back times. And this will be the third time in a row, right? No, he went, I'm sorry, he went. Fastball. And Rollins is there on the shift. He went change up fastball, change up fastball. And he gets through the fifth inning, leaves two. Two hits of the inning for the Astros. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth. Park when the Phillies take on the New York Mets full coverage on Comcast Sportsnet and the Comcast Network NBC 10. We'll have Schmidt in the booth obviously on Sunday but he'll be part of the festivities. Charlie Manuel's Wall of Fame induction on Saturday full coverage of that. And everything else about the Phillies alumni weekends. Against the New York Mets. Looking forward to seeing Charlie here at the ballpark. And some of the other guys that are going to be back for. Alumni weekend that we haven't seen in a while. Marlon Bird takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. Marlon is 0 for 1. He's lined out. And he's walked and scored a run. Boy, they're really pushing Peacock through this game, even though he's allowed eight runs on seven hits. You know, obviously, like the Phillies, they had to use their bullpen last night. So they don't have a, uh, an overwhelming amount of arms available. Phillies probably don't have uh, Bastardo, who threw 33 pitches. And I would think Deekman, who threw 30. But all those guys are going to toss before the ball game today. Jake to your left. DeFreitas is available. Teddy Giles, good slider last night. Ryan Sandberg said he was thought he would be available. I asked Antonio about uh, his outing last night. I said you were lights out last night. I said were you doing anything different? And he said no. He said just you know working on some things, uh, preparing. Preparation was something that he said. 
Bird hits one toward the hole. Backhand and a one hop by Petit. And he throws him out. The comparisons of the two bullpens, both were very good. Astros seven and two thirds allowed the one run, and the Phillies bullpen eight scoreless with 14 strikeouts. The only downfall to that was the amount of pitches, 144 pitches. Yeah. But you know it was phenomenal how they did it. 14 strikeouts though will obviously could, will pad that pitch count. But you're right oh, there. Yeah. There are four walks in there. Size more fouls it at the plate. I think one of the things we were all impressed with uh, was Hector Neris's uh, changeup, which we had heard was good. We thought his changeup was a breaking ball, but it was a changeup. Had those kind of tendencies. It had that kind of top to bottom rotation, almost like a almost looked like a palm ball. Or it had the movement of a palm ball. Well, he's got to be back at some point. Ryan Sandberg was very pleased with what he saw. Nine pitch debut. Two strikes, had a strikeout, got a win. You know, and every you get to that point in the game, every inning's a big inning. And nobody from the bullpen really struggled. You know, and uh, Jonathan was uh, he he was forced to throw a lot of pitches, uh, but he got through it. Kenny Giles threw a lot of pitches, but he got through it. And you know, sometimes when you're not your sharpest, you still have to go out and compete. And that's what they did. Well, talking to uh, Bob Stumpo, uh, who is the Phillies bullpen catcher, who you just saw uh, in that one shot in the bullpen. Uh, we were talking about Hector Neris' changeup, and he was describing how he threw it. He said he holds it like a split, but he does throw it uh, sort of from the side a little bit. Three quarter. Yeah. And that's why it had the, the tendency. Mm -hmm. There's Bob sitting in front of Antonio Bastardo. Talking about a big catcher. Stump was a big catcher. 2 2 pitch to Sizemore. And he shoots it toward third. Backhanded on a big hop by Dominguez. Two outs. Well, it's now time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag PhillyFanPhoto. For a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast, brought to you by AT&T. Will Nieves is 0 for 1. Will Nieves is 0 for 2. A 1, 2, 3, fifth inning. Five of the books here in Philadelphia. Pretty nice night with the fills up 8 2. It's center fielder who's been reaching base with consistency since the beginning of July. Ben Revere raised his batting average above 300 by the beginning of August, and his on-base percentage for the month of July finished in a solid 379. 
His fast feet have taken him to the 30-plus stolen base plateau for the third time in his career. They've also guided him to the deepest part of the outfield, stealing runs away. And his efforts are brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Well, this is reminiscent of the great Eric Gregg. Laz Diaz doing a little dancing with the Fanatic in between innings. This went on for a, a few moments before Laz actually broke into a smile and then broke into a dance. <laughs> Jimmy Rollins joking with him a little bit. Oh, that was kind of cool to see. First pitch to Dominguez is fouled and it's 0 1. I was watching his other umpires, his other buddies, and they had their hand over their mouth. They knew <laughs> something was coming after a little bit. Les has a lot of personality. Yep. Good man. That's why everybody, I mean, I know that everybody says that you shouldn't know who the umpires are, that if they have a good game, you don't know they're even there. Hey, they're human beings. Well, you always you know. Knew, you knew who Eric Gregg was. Yeah. Hey, you know, I've, I've always had the utmost respect for umpires. You know, you got to give it to get it. And I've really enjoyed. You know, some now I've never had a great relationship with the umpires, but I mean, on the field, I think when you show your respect, you know, you get their respect, and that's that's really these guys. This is their profession. This is their livelihood, and they're trying their best. Somebody from the uh, Astros dugout is now joking with Laz Diaz. Be Dexter Fowler. That yeah. was Dexter Fowler. Call strike three. Little paint on the inside part of the plate by David Buchanan. One out here in the six. Well, Murph, apparently um, David Buchanan isn't the only one in the Phillies organization that's doing a little painting tonight. Yeah, a couple pitchers uh, having a good night. We were keeping our eye on Jesse Biddle, who is uh, making his way back through the minors, and uh, he got a start tonight in Clearwater. And check out the numbers. He went five innings. Allowed no hits, no runs, one walk, five strikeouts. He retired the last 10 that he faced. So that is certainly good news for folks that have been keeping their eye on Jesse Biddle, the former number one pick from a couple of years back, who uh, yeah, was having some uh, personal problems and he took some time off and he's working his way back now. So that is good to see. Great to see. Uh, and Ryan Sandberg talked about that today and said he was interested to see how Jesse came out of that ball game. And obviously it was all good news. Yeah, it was his first start since June 23rd through 66 strikes, or excuse me, 66 pitches, 44 strikes. 44 strikes is huge. Yeah. And, you know, and look, here's a, a hometown kid, first round draft choice. He's got, you know, and a young kid out of high school. Got a lot of pressure on him, and I think he's put some of that pressure on himself. I think he just had to go back and figure some things out on his own, figure out who he is, and go back and compete. I, I, I had some conversation with him last winter, and he seems like a great kid and all he wants to do is go out and pitch compete and get here to Philadelphia to be a major league pitcher. But there's going to be some time in between there because he's he's very green. He needs to learn how to pitch and and learn how the game is played. Oh, two pitch to Marisnik is in the dirt one and two. Well the other story in the farm system tonight is that Aaron Nola uh, made his double A debut for the Reading Fightins. Five innings six hits four strikeouts. 47 strikes. 72 pitches overall. Sounds like that was a, a good night. The Fightins are up 9 1 over Harrisburg. That game's in the sixth inning. Well, and that's what the minor leagues are all about development. And that's what the Phillies are you know, trying to develop. You know, and the Phillies over the years have develop some players that you have seen here in the major leagues and that's really what every organization's goal is to try to develop as many players as they can to get them to the big leagues fly ball to center field a one two three six inning for David Buchanan who's developing before our our eyes he has a six run lead kind of a relaxed night here at Citizens Bank Park a little different than last night between the Astros and the Phillies.
is brought to you by Toyota. The annual clearance event is going on now. Toyota, let's go places. Buy McDonald's. Any size hot or iced coffee is just $1. McDonald's, ah, I'm loving it. And buy the Pennsylvania Lottery. Benefits all the Pennsylvanians every day. Call the Fanatic Attic. They have a lot of things Fanatic, including the Fanatic. You have some golf clubs. You can get the Fanatic uh, body uh, to cover up your Head cover. Head covers. Cover up your golf clubs. Plus the stuffed animals. That little guy will probably like one of those. Bottom of the sixth inning. And Darren Downs, who pitched in last night's ball game, will pitch here tonight for the Astros against Cody Ashey. Downs 38 ball game. Two and one with a 4.50 ERA. Four pitch pitcher, fastball, curveball, slider, changeup. Upper 80s, a low 90 fastball, upper 80 slider, 72 75 curveball, and a 80 to 80, 83 to 85 mile changeup. And it's funny, these guys, you know, coming out of the bullpen with four pitches, it's very rarely do they get to use all four of those pitches. Especially when in a short stint. As she fouls it back to our left and out of play, one ball and one strike. You know, and a lot of times when you're warming up, you don't have time to work on getting four pitches ready to get into an appearance. I guess you usually know though which ones you're going to discard when you become a relief pitcher, right? Well, you would think, but you know, you've you've used those four pitches you know, throughout your life. A lot of these guys have been starters everywhere they've been. Now they've gotten to the big leagues, and all of a sudden they are in through the minor leagues. Have realized now maybe I can't start. Now I'm a you know I'm a bullpen guy, but sometimes it's hard to get rid of the four pitches. But when you come in when you come in through that gate, yeah, you should probably have a pretty good idea. You know, I got to use these two pitches today. Two balls and two strikes. And usually when it's lefty and lefty, it's some sort of a breaking ball along with a fastball. And she stays alive. Corporate's gotten that uh, mask banged around a little bit here tonight. Swing and a miss, and Ashley is struck out. First out here in the sixth. Buchanan's coming up. Fans follow every Phillies game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look ins, instant replay, scores, stats, audio, free MLB.tv game of the day, and much more. Download on the App Store. Visit Phillies.com today. David is one for one with a walk. Center field, Marisnik. Well, he probably likes all this shifting going on because they've had him running every which way. His speed overcomes a lot of the uh, the deficiencies in the shift. There haven't been many. Their shift has worked really well. They, they've scouted the Phillies well, but he's had to go back a few times from where they have him placed. And it's Bo Porter, the second year manager for the Astros. You agree they probably shift more than anything we've seen. They do. They shift almost with every hitter. Just, I, I, absolutely. I mean, and even if, if it's subtle, like Dominguez is off the line at third right now. How many times have we seen Altuve somewhere up the middle? And the Phillies have hit into that shift just in the two games here. Yeah. See Dominguez off the line at third. 
and the center fielder Marisnik is way over toward left center. Now there's a lot of times there's there's a little bit of a shift for the hitters, but nothing like what we've seen from the Astros. Yeah, they take that five hole away uh, in the infield uh, between short and third, and they give you down the left field line. Here, they take this this hole away right here with the third baseman, and they you know they force you. They say here, go ahead and hit it down the line if you can. Where, where, what the shift would have looked like for uh, Tony Gwynn Sr. What if they would have done that because he no. peppered that hole? No, because he, I would think they would have pulled the shortstop into the five hole, have the third baseman toward the line. But ball. you know, I, Tony Gwynn Sr. had so much bat control, it was unbelievable. I mean, he, he, it was it was like he was hitting off a tee at times. Back toward the middle, another base hit for Revere. It's a three-hit night. 106 singles this year for Ben Revere. And his average just keeps on climbing. That's the third 0-2 hit given up tonight by the Houston Astros. Revere has stolen a base tonight. There would be a chance he's going to swipe it back here with Rollins up. Because if he's thrown out, then Rollins will just lead off the next inning. Well, I'm not sure with an 8 2 lead. You know, that unwritten rule used to be if you got to five runs or more, you don't steal. And, you know, I really don't know where that came from. But in today's game, with the swings the way they are and the ballparks the way they are, I don't know if I agree with that. I don't agree. I, I would just keep on tacking on at this point. I mean, there probably comes a point, but to me, six runs in this day and age. I mean, it's it's a little loftier, and it it means a little bit more than seven or eight years ago, with all the the bombers that were playing and the steroids in the game. I'd just be afraid it would come back and bite you if you said, oh, I'm going to put the stop sign on here. I agree, Tom. Well, it's just like sometimes when you get late in the game, you get a man on first, and uh, you don't hold the runner on in a, in a two run game. But I'm not sure if I agree with that one either. Well, Revere is retired at second base. No runs, one hit, one man left for the Phils. We have played our first six here in Philly.
Time now for your local Honda dealers game summary. It's 8 2 Phillies. They scored five in the first for the first time since 2013 in September. But David Buchanan's been right on point tonight. No walks, five strikeouts. And as we go to the seventh, he begins the seventh with 86 pitches. Number 87 was just fouled by Petit. Petit is one for two. He singled his first time up, struck out his last time. No walks. Zippo. Over the screen, out of play, 0 and 2. Well, David has been around the strike zone tonight. Early on, he was he missed, you know, he threw a few more extra pitches than he needed to because he was just off the plate, but I think he's honed that in. And he's really kind of got himself into a nice rhythm tonight. 0 2 pitch to Petit. Fouled away. And it also helps too that the Astros are swinging rather aggressively tonight. I guess you just feed off that if you can if you're a pitcher. Yep. Especially when you can get ahead in the count. That'll be a base hit for Petit. That was one of the only balls that he's hung up there tonight. A leadoff single here in the seventh. These lucky fans are tonight's Citizen Seven. They will each receive a prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Good banking is simple, clear, and personal. And that's helping you bank better. Citizens Bank, good banking is good citizenship. Well, he got a little greedy there. Hit himself in an 0 2 count, a couple foul balls, and Tried to throw a put away curveball in an 0 2 count and hung it and gave up a base hit. Well, Mark Krause will pinch hit. He pinched it in last night's ball game. In the dirt, 1 0. Fulton Evich continues to throw in the bull bullpen for the Astros. Recognizing that he's missing his slot a little bit. Well, that was a changeup that just kind of went east to west. Never got his hand through that ball to finish it. They don't want to go to the bullpen here in the seventh, but he could be tiring. There's a good pitch, two at two. Kind of tied him up with a cutter. There's the answer to your question about Diekman. 30 pitches last night. It might be good for a batter or two here. Well, a nice two ball here would be nice. He'd get himself a ground ball double play. Tuve on deck. That ball's ripped it to right center field. That'll be a base hit. Bird's going to cut it off, but oh, he dropped it, and that's going to allow Kraus to go to second. I think Kraus would have held up at first. Petit was definitely going to third. We'll see how they score that one. That could be a pitch at double. Here he leaves a fastball right down the middle, tailing right down the middle, and Krause just 
gets the barrel to that ball and gets the head out and hits the ball quite hard the right center field gap. Yeah, they have scored that a single and an E9. Bob McClure coming out just to talk with uh, David Buchanan with Altuve coming up. Well, the Phillies have breathing room at this point, but the top of the order is due up for the Astros, and Altuve is two for three against David Buchanan. Well, it's time now for our AT&T fan photo of the game. Now, this is a first, Jamie. Drummer 777. He's known as Steve. Steve paused his television <laughs> at this point and then went and got a snack. It's like Matt's ready to club me over the head with that bat. Tweet your photo to hashtag Philly fan photo for a chance to be shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. <laughs> Steve, you should have included what you had, what, what snack you went for. Here's Altuve, two for three. Outside and low, one and Need an out here. Trade an out for a run. Yeah, they are definitely conceding the run with the infield back. Three balls and no strikes. That was pitch number 100. Well, he certainly has been around the strike zone. Out towards shortstop Rollins to his right has to hurry to get Altuve dug out by Howard. A run scores. It's an 8-3 ball game. RBI for Altuve. Petit crosses the plate. Altuve is slowly going back, and I think Bo Porter is wondering if he should come out and talk about that. And I think he's saying nope. It's a lot closer than I thought. But he is out. Well, two things there. Altuve could have touched the front of the bag, and Ryan Howard could have come forward and backhanded that ball. Either way, he's out. He's out, and so is uh, David Buchanan. Ryan Sandberg out to the mound. He's going to go get his right hander. And his first start here at the big leagues. He leads after six of the third. He'll get a very nice round of applause all the way around, and rightfully so. He leaves with an 8-3 lead. He's responsible for the runner over third.
Check out the Phillies authentic shop at Citizens Bank Park located behind section 133. The shop features authenticated game used jerseys lineup cards and autographed baseballs from the Phillies wall of famers. New items are added each homestand for a list of available items and more info email merch M E R C H at Phillies dot com. Signed jerseys from Chase Utley and Cole Hamels. Among other things. It's a pretty cool spot. If you're here at the ballpark you can just kind of wander over and take a look at some of the stuff. Something may pique your interest. David Buchanan a little disappointed that he wasn't able to finish the seventh inning but he did give the Phil six and a third. And now it's up to the bullpen to get the last eight outs of tonight's ball game. Deep middle face Robbie Grossman. Grossman is a switch hitter, but they move him around to the right side of the plate with the runner at second base. I had said that Krause was over at third, but he's at second base on that ball to shortstop. One to Grossman. Whoa. That one got way past Will Nieves. A wild pitch. 96 on that fastball. Deadened by the padding behind home plate. Look at the woman in the blue. Whoop. She was daydreaming. Balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss. He got him with a slider. Two away here in the seventh. And now Chris Carter is the batter. Well, here I think Will was looking for the slider down and in, and it backed up. Looks like Deakman's trying to overthrow it a little bit, just as he did with the previous fastball. Kind of running on what we call running away from it with his front side. All he's got left is arm and. He's got to spin it up there. Here again, we're talking the difference in games. You know, the outcomes have meanings. And last night, it was a tie game, but he had a good little tempo about himself. Tonight, he's trying to find that here. But he's got to also get a man on base. Yeah, he's about to reach his major league workload from a season ago. Deacon is. Now he worked more. Obviously down in the minor leagues too. Out towards center field. Fortunately, Carter could not extend his arms. And Deakman gets the two batters he needs to here in the seventh. Astros lead one. Time to stretch with the Phils on top, eight to three.
Danny Charlie would have liked this kind of game because he got some uh, pop from some of the big boys like Chase Utley a three run home run. Kraus stays in the game to play right field for the Astros. And the new pitcher is right hander Mike Fulton Evich. Fulton Evich in his second ball game went two thirds in his previous outing here in the big leagues. And he's on to face uh, Chase Utley. Ryan Howard Marlon Bird. Chase uh, hit his 10th home run his last time up. It's the 11th consecutive season. Where he's had at least 10 home runs. We've always talked about uh, Chase when it comes to power hitting second baseman. Well the only other second baseman in baseball. That's had. Uh, more. 10 home run or more seasons is. Jeff Kent. Wow. I wouldn't have guessed that. Whose primary position is second base. Some guys have played second. Kent had 12 straight seasons. Utley now with 11 straight seasons. One hit this year by the Phils. One tree will be planted by the Pennsylvania Hoarder Cultural Society as part of Home Runs for Trees, a partnership between the Phillies, PHS, and Aramark. Home Runs for Trees is part of a project to restore the region's tree coverage. For more info, visit phillies.com slash red goes green. Single up the middle, and that up leaves a board here in the seventh. Yeah, you might think that Ryan Sandberg uh, would be in that category, and it wouldn't be. A strange thought. Uh, but in 93, Rhino hit nine home runs. 94, he hit five home runs, played in just 57 games. So he had nine straight years of 10 home runs or more. And it finished with 282. And Howard has another base hit. He lines that one to left center field. Two for four. Well, obviously, he's had some good swings these last couple of nights. And everything he's hit well has been the left center field. Or out of the ballpark to left center field. Marlins 0 for 2. He walked his first time up. <laughs> Breaking ball inside. One ball, no strikes. David Buchanan is the recipient of the eight runs the Phillies have scored here tonight. Colton Evich made his major league debut against the Blue Jays. The Astros have had seven players make their major league debut here in 2014. I do not know what the record is, but that seems like a lot. I got to believe there may be a few more once uh, once September rolls around as well. Two old pitch. Check swing three and out. Just saw some conversation there. Between A.J. Burnett Cole Hamels and the starter tonight David Buchanan. I think that's. You know, I kind of we'll call that debriefing. I think that's kind of that's good. That's, I love to see that kind of conversation.
lot of it's probably positive reinforcement too for what he did. Well, I think he kind of looked like he was talking about what he was doing or what he was attempting to do. Yeah. And then they'll probably fill in the blanks. Three and one to Marlon Burns. His runners take their lead. And three balls and two strikes. 97 on that fastball. Because it's not like they know the Houston Astro hitters overly well. They're so young and they haven't seen them this year before. So I'm sure it's just talking uh, nuts and bolts of pitching. Drive toward left center field. That's a base hit. Utley's going to score. It'll be a 9 3 ball game. An RBI for Marlon Bird, number 64 of the season. It ends in 0 for 11 for Marlon. And Chase read that right off the bat. Three straight hits for the Phils. And Brent Strom's going to go out and talk to his young right hander, the former number one pick for the Houston Astros. And you see here, a good fastball down, and Marlon just stays. Right through it and uses the big part of the field. And again, you see where location is really important. That ball was down, but it didn't, didn't really have any movement. And it doesn't matter how hard you throw the ball at this level, guys will figure out a way to catch up to it. Yeah, this kid has a very live arm. He set a number one pick in 2010 uh, for the Astros. Got a good curveball too. Very good curveball. So Chase Utley has scored a couple runs tonight. He has two hits and four at bats. Phillies overall have 11 hits, and now Brady Sizemore is the hitter. Talking about Jamie. And it's 0 1. It's got some good downward action to it. 78 miles an hour after 97 mile an hour fastball. And inside, 1 and 1. Two balls and one strike to Sizemore. Chopper towards second. This might be two. There's one. And two. Four, six, three, double play. Over to third goes Howard. And Will Davis will get a chance to pick up another RBI. Well, we're just a few days away from Charlie Manuel's induction into the Phillies Wall of Fame. The Phillies have a lot of home games coming up here in 2014. Uh, this one is a special one though. Looking for something to do on Saturday night. Come on out to the ballpark. Tickets can be purchased by going to Phillies.com. Charlie will take his rightful spot on the Phillies Wall of Fame, the all-time winningest manager in Phillies history. Tickets can be purchased by going to Phillies.com. Davis takes outside. Wanna know? Consistently right at 97 with that fastball. It hasn't really budged too much. 
And it doesn't look like he's laboring to get to that 97. It really doesn't. Toyota Major League scoreboard. The Pirates are leading the Marlins 7 3. Christian Yelich does have a couple RBIs. I'll tell you, this could be a big night for the Nationals. They're leading the Mets 7 1. The Braves have lost. The Marlins are trailing. The Nationals could be four up over the Braves, six and a half up over Miami. Look out, Jamie. Oh, right toward us. Oh. The call was headed right in and hit the. Upper deck. Just at the foot of the upper deck. I had it. I was like one of those. I had it. I was like the, the people behind old plate. I flinched at the last moment. Two two pitch. I think that hit him. Swing and a miss and it hit him. Howard's coming home. The ball is alive, and the A base is going to be safe at first, and a run will score. First base was unoccupied. Oh, the ball hit him, so it's a dead ball. So, swing and a miss, the ball hit him. And the side is retired, so the run does not score. A strikeout for Fultinevich. And we'll go to the eighth inning. It's 9 3. Phillies on top. They score a run on three base hits. Get to your local Nissan store for the ride of your life and save big today by AT&T, mobilizing your world. And by the Quality Plus Sports Stores. Go further. 9-3, Phillies on top, top of the eighth inning. All right, so the end of the inning is Dominic Brown comes into play left field for the Phils, and Sizemore moves from left field over to right field for Marlon Byrd. And Justin DeFreitas is the uh, new pitcher for the Phils. 36 game for Justin. Two and one, a 2.70 ERA. So the bottom of the seventh ended. Bottom of the seventh ended with Will Nieves going down on strikes. Now he missed this, Jamie. The ball hit him and then hit Corporan. Once it hits him, it's basically a dead ball. Normally, the catcher doesn't catch the two strike picks. You can run to first. I thought it hit him in the arm. It did, yeah. He, he's saying that hit the bat. One ball and no strikes to Jonathan Singleton. Out and one.
Singleton's 0 for 3. Fielder's choice on RBI, two ground outs. Fly ball, center field. Well, you can see why they hit home runs tonight between Carter and even Singleton there. They're not able to square it up, but they do have they do have some nice swings. Some pretty big swings. Long swings. That'll bring Dominguez to the plate. Dominguez takes low. It's one ball and no strikes. Dominguez grounded out. He doubled and scored, and he struck out looking. Breaking ball down low. Pitch, it's three and two. Nice easy 92 miles an hour for Justin DeFreitas. Breaking ball and a called strike three. His slider is his best pitch. He seemed to lock Dominguez, who has struck out twice tonight. Two gone. Here, after a couple fastballs, you see a good slider that's got some depth to it. He freezes Dominguez for strike three. Corporate is 0 for 3. He's flying out to center twice. He's grounded out to second. One ball, no strikes. And that one's fouled down the left field line. The Mario Hollins will probably pitch the ninth inning for the Phils. If the score remains what it is now. Or Cesar Jimenez, one of those guys. That one's looped out towards center. Revere is there. One, two, three. Eighth inning for Justin DeFreitas, who only threw 13 pitches, so. Maybe he's the guy that's going to pitch the ninth. We know that guy's not going to pitch the ninth. He's got a lot of other stuff going on.
Hyundai defensive play of the game. And for this, Ryan Howard gets himself a nice big hop right there. Wasn't sure what to do when he when he didn't see Altuve in the out of the corner of his eye going to second. Made an attempt at him, but knew he had to force out at second base and made the smart play and get the sure out. And that is the Hyundai defensive play of the game. Thought it was interesting looking at uh, uh, Jimmy Rollins' reaction to that because I think he sensed, hey, we got a chance to get a double yeah. play here. But actually, that after Ryan made an attempt to Altuve. He then moved himself into the baseline and made that throw where he would have had to have gotten out of the way. Yeah. After he threw that ball, if Jimmy decided to throw that ball back to first base. Cody Ashley will lead it off here in the bottom of the eighth inning. First pitch is up high, 1 0. Cesar Jimenez is warming up in the bullpen. And it'll be Ashley Brown who came on as part of a double switch and then the top of the order. The ball's popped up. Third base side, Dominguez has room. One out. Time for the Major League Notebook. Murph. It is indeed, Tom. Brought to you by Gwinnett Mercy University. And the Padres have their new general manager. His name is A.J. Preller. He will be their new guy. Preller was in his 10th season with the Texas Rangers organization where he oversaw uh, player development and scouting, especially in Latin America. He will be San Diego's new man. He is their fourth general manager since 2009. And also an injury uh, note, uh, the Miami Marlins' Jared Cosart, who they just uh, received in a trade from the Houston Astros, scratched in his next start with an oblique strain. Uh, he did make his first start with them the day after he was traded over there. That was a loss. He uh, felt the pain when he was having catch the other day, so they're going to sit him down for at least one start. Not going to put him on the DL as of yet. They're hoping it's not very serious, but uh, he will not make his next start, guys. All right. We appreciate that, Murph. You know, it's interesting. Murph was talking about the Padres. Uh, general manager's position. They've had a couple of their uh, front office employees, their assistant GMs, kind of step aside. AJ Hinch, who had, along with Omar Minaya, uh, been the acting general manager, uh, he steps aside. Brown goes the other way. Carter on the run back. Now there are two outs. But I guess they figured, for, in AJ's case, he probably wanted the job, and when he didn't get it, he figured, all right, well, I'm going to go look for other opportunities elsewhere. Here's Ben Revere with two outs. Beer takes outside. Thank you. I think I've been here for most of them. The ball's hit out towards center field. It's hit pretty well, but as we mentioned, Riznik runs up pretty well, and it's off his glove, and it's going to hit off the wall. Watch Revere go on his way to third. That should be a triple. Ben Revere is four for five tonight. Boy, it did sound like he hit that ball well, too. Ben Revere, he put a charge in that. A different sound off of his bat right there. He put a charge into that ball. And uh, center fielder just turned his head and took off and almost made a great catch off his glove. Turned into an easy triple for Ben Revere. So he's at third with two outs. Jimmy Rollins, the batter, 12 hits now overall for the Phils. Nine runs on 12 hits. Revere has four of them. And that's off the glove of Corcoran. A run will score. 10-3 Phillies. Phillies have not had many nights like this here in 2014. I think we're all embracing more nights like this here in 2014. Most definitely. One ball, one strike. 
curve ball fouled. Cooper, it's getting beat up tonight by these baseballs. Ah. <laughs> On the outside corner, Rollins is called out. Billy settle for a run to pad their lead. We'll go to the ninth. Ben will catch his breath. Billy's up by seven. Former Phil Marlin Anderson gives his analysis plus a full recap of tonight's Phil's Astros matchup only on Cure Auto Insurance presents Phillies post game live. We'll go to the ninth inning and Cesar Jimenez is the new pitcher for the Phillies Jimenez in his fourth ball game takes over for Justin DeFreitas. DeFreitas took over for Diekman who took over for Buchanan. So now Jimenez, four to third so far in the big leagues, and four hits allowed. And he will face uh, Jake Marisnik, Petit. Those are the first two hitters for the Astros. Now the Phillies trying to win two in a row against Houston. And win two in a row here at Citizens Bank Park, which, as we've said, has been a problem, surprisingly. That's off to David Buchanan, who allowed three runs in six of the third, scattered nine hits. He walked only uh, one batter. Actually, he didn't walk anybody. It's going to say I had him down for no walks. Excellent but I could job. be wrong. Yeah. I've been wrong before. The three runs were earned. Marisnik swings at the first pitch. Howard calls it. The other part of this night is that Howard has had a good evening again offensively. And he takes care of the first batter, one out. And now Petit, who has two hits, he's two for three. Petit will be 30 years old later on th this year. Out of the Oakland A's organization. Takes high. It's 1 0. Phillies close this out. They'll have uh, Roberto Hernandez going for the sweep tomorrow night here at Citizens Bank Park. 
against Colin McHugh. The way Roberto's been throwing, I feel pretty good about it. Yeah, he has thrown the ball very well as of late. Actually, it started a little bit before the All Star break. Now the 2 1 pitch coming to Petit. At the knees, 2 and 2. Out toward left field, Dominic Brown dancing back toward the track. Two outs. Dominic getting a chance to play a little bit here. Said yesterday that he was feeling better after the tonsillitis. He did say that there's a good chance he's going to have to have his tonsils out after the season's over. What did he say yesterday after, before the ball game? That as you get older, your tonsils are supposed to get smaller, but his are the size of a 13 year old kid. So they're probably going to have to come out. Does that mean he can act like a 13 year old kid too? You have tonsils like that? Wouldn't be a bad thing <laughs> in certain situations. <laughs> OJ Hose hits one up the middle for a base hit. Pinch hitter. Jose Altuve has two hits tonight and an RBI. He now has 158 hits. And he is uh, sort of setting the pace for the Astros all time record for hits. Now it's Craig Biggio in 98 who had 210. But at this point in the season, Biggio had 144 hits. So Altuve, as long as he stays healthy, has 158. So he's at the leader in the clubhouse right now at this point in the season. Well, you figure they got just under 50 games to go. See so if he gets two hits a game, he blows it away, shatters it. Ball one strike. Fly ball shallow center field. Rollins is out. Revere is in. J. Roll makes the catch and that will do it. The Phils have taken back to back ball games over the Houston Astros as they win tonight 10 3. They kind of win it going away. Pretty comfortable. They haven't had many games like this. Cesar Jimenez able to close things out for the Phils. Well, the reason, at least one of them, is because of the offense. Ten runs on 12 hits, and here are our W.B. Mason deliveries of the game. Here's Ryan Howard. It's a big hit. Early in the game, drives in a couple of runs. Keep that line moving for the Phillies. Two RBIs. And then here in the fourth inning, Chase Utley gets a changeup down and in and deposits it into the right field stands for a three-run home run. To add on to the lead, and add on to the Phillies' lead, and those are the W.B. Mason deliveries of the game. A couple of good signs here tonight. You know, Rollins, obviously, uh, but Utley getting his swings. Ben Revere staying hot with four hits tonight. And Ryan Howard continuing uh, to swing the bat well, all backing the pitching of our Chevrolet player of the game. Yeah, David Buchanan tonight really threw the ball well from the, from the get-go. Got in a little trouble in the first inning, gave up a run. But after that, really settled down. And really established that he's going to throw the ball down the zone tonight. Threw some really good breaking ball to a lot of cutters like he normally does, but he competed. And that's what I think is going to make David Buchanan the special pitcher he's going to mature into and get the Phillies into the seventh inning and handed it over to the bullpen and uh, walks away for his sixth win of the season. Sixth win of the season. And he also got his first major league hit, his first major league RBI. So he could check that off. 
So he becomes our Chevrolet player of the game. Well, it was nice to see him getting that base hit because it helped out the Phils in that first inning. He was thrown out trying to stretch that base hit uh, into an extra base at second, and that wrapped up the first inning. So a good night for the Phils all the way around. They win it 10 to 3. David Buchanan gets the victory, and he gets a chance to chat with Murph. All right, thank you very much. Yep, here with David Buchanan, and uh, I guess it felt pretty good to be back out on this mound here at Citizens Bank Park again. How did it feel? Yeah, you said it, man. Uh, being back up here in Philly, man, you, you can't really ask for anything more. Being back in front of the fans, uh, just being back on big league field, man, it's great. You get another major league win, ho hum. You get your first major league hit and your first major league RBI. How did that feel as well? That's about time, you know. I just, uh, I didn't say things for training. I wish I, saw, I wish I'd stopped getting thrown out of second base. And uh, the same happened the Nationals. Every, every time I get a hit or close to a hit, it gets reviewed and overturned. So maybe I can just get a, get a clean hit and stay at first base for once. More importantly, you do your job out there on the mound. And it seemed like Jimmy was saying it seemed like most of your pitches were working today. And you had pretty good command of, of all of them. Yeah, I, I felt pretty good just uh, getting ahead. That was one thing I told Will. Before the game, it's like going over the hitters. This is the main thing. I was trying to get strike one, period. You know, just try, trying to get strike one, get ahead, and, you know, let the defense work. And you go up there, put five runs in the first, you know, that really helps you get a little run support. So, I mean, after that, your main job is to go up there and throw zeros, get them back in the dugout. So that's all I was trying to do. Uh, they put it in place, so be it. Um, I hate to finish the, the seventh like that. You know, I was really trying to get out of there. But, uh, you know, you get a guy 0 2 1 2, you can't really hang curveballs like that. But you big look hitters, they capitalize it. But overall, it was, it was good. It's a learning process, and I saw you have a conversation with Cole and AJ when you came out of that game. Uh, two pretty good guys to discuss an outing, I would imagine, as you come down and, and sit down and reflect. No, you, can't, you can't ask everybody else to talk about You know, that's, that's one thing. I, know I was glad to get back up here, man. Just the wisdom that I'm around every day, you, you can't substitute that for anything else. You know, I mean, I, I love the guys down in Lehigh for sure, but uh, I mean, just the knowledge that's around you up here, you can't ask for anything more than that. Well, it's good to have you back. Congratulations on the win, guys. Back upstairs. All right, Murph, thank you very much. He gets his sixth win. He gets his first major league hit, and the Phils walk away with a pretty easy victory. They win a 10-3 over the Astros. They take the first two of this three-game series.